me to add just a few words of welcome to what's been said already. By your participation today, you do honor to the victims of the Holocaust. You recognize the suffering of the uh, survivors and you celebrate their very survival. For me, both professionally, in terms of the work I do at B'nai B'rith Canada, and personally, as the daughter of a Holocaust survivor, having a small part in shaping a conference like this is really a high point of my career, because I feel that I can be part of this important priority that we have of giving the victims a voice, a voice that was taken away so brutally. There's a phrase at a particularly momentous moment in the liturgy of Yom Kippur, the holiest day in the Jewish year, Kol Dumama Daka, a still small voice. There are many rabbinical interpretations of that phrase and the fact that it takes place on that particular time. And not being of a rabbinical turn of fr phrase myself, I have my own interpretation. And I think of this every single time during the Yom Kippur liturgy. This still small voice is the voice that's in danger of being lost, the voice of the dispossessed and the downtrodden, and the voice that we are sometimes too busy just to hear. And as we move through the years ever further from the Shoah, the danger is that this voice is in danger of, of being lost forever. That's why one of the chief priorities of this conference and of the three-year B'nai task force that the minister just announced is to give the victims back their voice through study of their history and presentation of their experiences and real discussion of the lessons that must be drawn for them. And this can be done in a variety of settings and to a variety of audiences. And instead of that still small voice, we will have a strong, resounding voice that we can take to schools, to universities, and to the general public, a voice that will sound through the generations. And if we can do that, ladies and gentlemen, through working together over the next two days, then we will indeed have made progress, and this conference will have been a resounding success. I'll just take a few moments of your time to explain a little bit about the conference program and what you can expect over the next two days. This conference takes us from the infamous time when the phrase, none is too many, shaped Canada's policy towards Jewish refugees trying to flee the Nazi dragnet. It redirects the focus from Nazi Germany, the usual subject of most of the attention at Holocaust-related conferences, to Canada. Some may think that's an unlikely venue. It looks at the uh, devastating impact of Canadian immigration restrictions and internal wartime measures, examining the fate of those who were turned back and look at various, looking at various cases north of the 42nd parallel that generally do not receive much public attention. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Canada's moment to examine its past, and I salute the government for its willingness to undertake such a momentous and probably painful step. We will also look at the role that public opinion played then and now in the process of exclusion and dehumanization, because we acknowledge that government does not operate in a vacuum and that ordinary citizens have a role and responsibility in this matter as well. We look at how immigration policy is shaped and what has to happen for immigrants or refugees to be truly accepted in this country. Through this type of retrospective, we can gauge just how far Canada has come. We will also look at the continuum of exclusion in operation during the Holocaust era in Europe, but we will examine as well how this, be, how this has been replicated in various war-torn areas around the globe. Experts will discuss how these lessons can be incorporated into education and memorialization through the schools and through the network of Holocaust museums and organizations already on the front lines in this type of work. We'll look at the role of testimony as well, especially important at a time when Holocaust deniers are becoming louder and louder in their challenge to historical truth. But we also, also remember that there are those who challenge the moral authority of anyone other than survivors or even children of survivors to bear testament. There's considerable debate within the survivor community as well. As the famous Romanian poet and Holocaust survivor Paul Salan once said, no one bears witness for the witness. But sadly soon, it will be our job to bear witness, to bear the torch for both the victims and the survivors. What strategies should we adopt to do this? What has worked best so far? What still needs to be done? How can existing work here in Canada be enhanced through membership in the International Task Force? And what will the role be of the neighborhood's National Task Force? These are just some of the questions that will be asked and hopefully answered during the next two days. I really would like to thank you for your participation. We look forward to your input throughout the conference. And in closing, I just want to add my thanks to the government 
for giving us this important opportunity, really for all Canadians, to, self, to have self-examination and reflection on our past and where we go forward. I would like to thank my very outstanding and understanding conference chair, Professor Alan Goldschlager. I would like to also uh, uh, thank all the members of the steering committee from across Canada who were so generous with their suggestions and their time in helping me to shape this program. And finally, I'd like to thank my colleagues at B'nai B'rith Canada, especially the conference staff, Tema Smith and Alana Katz, for their dedication and commitment to making what was really a dream of a conference into an absolute reality. And now I just would like to ask Alan Goldschlager to open formally the first plenary panel. Thank you.